To install your encoders, uh, your encoders will be located in your handlebar box. Open the handlebar box like so. And your encoders will be a clear plastic bag on the inside. Your encoders come with um, several different pieces of hardware for different frames that they could be attached to. This is your encoder piece, comes with two separate encoders. And then here is your different pieces of hardware pertaining to which frame you're installing onto. Today we're going to use two one and a half inch bolts, three of the spacers, and our two encoders on our metal frame. These are the parts we're going to be using, our two encoders. From our hardware bag, we grabbed our inch and a half bolt as well as our three inch long bolt. We also grabbed three spacers as well as our two locking washers. We're going to be installing the bottom carriage encoder. To do that, we'll grab our inch and a half bolt, we'll take our locking washer and place it on the bolt. We'll then place the bolt through the encoder. Now notice the head of my screw comes through on the opposite end of my wheel. So once it's placed through, I have the bolt on the same side as the wheel. I'll then take one of my half inch spacers and I can then install my encoder onto the back of my carriage into the pre-drilled hole. You want to tighten this down tight. And you'll notice right here that my encoder wants to constantly spring back. That's important that it does that. When installed, you'll want this arm right here at about, if I'm viewing it at this angle, at about uh, 9 or 10 o'clock on the clock. Once we have our encoder installed onto our bottom carriage, we're going to now place our bottom carriage onto our frame. To do that, I will first hold the encoder to make sure that when I place it onto my frame, it doesn't hit the encoder. I flip my carriage over. I place it onto the frame. Now notice, right here, my wheels aren't lined up properly. You want to be sure that all four of your wheels line up on the, the rail like they're supposed to, just like that, and your carriage should roll nice and smoothly left to right. Right here, our encoder should be placed against the track. So it's important to note that my encoder does in fact rest on the rail, and you can see how the spring guarantees that it presses against the rail and rolls as we roll it left to right on that track. Once our bottom carriage has been placed, again ensuring that my encoder is on the proper location, you can then place your top carriage ensuring that your wheels are lined up on the track on top of your bottom carriage. To install our top encoder, we're going to use our 3 inch long bolt. Just like the bottom encoder, we'll take our tooth washer, place it onto our bolt. We'll then take our encoder, and just like the bottom encoder, we'll place the bolt through the encoder with the head on the opposite side of the wheel. Place it all the way through. And take two of our spacers, one, two, and we'll take one of our quarter 20 nuts. We'll place the encoder through the track, install the nut. After I have my nut semi-tight, I can then pivot my encoder all the way around. This is the arm, just like on the bottom encoder, I want to pivot this around. That's what's going to add my tension to the encoder as it's pressing down on the track. Then taking your Phillips head screwdriver, you want to give it maybe one or two turns of your screwdriver to ensure that it's locked in nice and tight. Once we have our bolt nice and tight, we want to be sure, this is what we call the spring arm, that the spring arm is at about 10 o'clock. And the most important piece is that the spring, which is inside the spring arm, has nice tension that actually pushes the encoder down to the track. And it's pushing out 100% of the time. So therefore, when you roll your carriage front to back, your encoder rolls nice and smooth across the track. Coming back to the original box we pulled our encoders out of, we're going to then remove our handlebar display. We're going to remove our rear handlebars. We're going to remove our thread stand. The screwdriver that's in there you can remove if you'd like or you can leave it in the box. 
the thread stand should have the plastic stand as well as the bag assembly for the thread stand itself. After we remove those pieces, we can then remove our top foam. And down below, you will see your assembled handlebar. Your second box with your assembly, this has the machine, as well as some covers on the inside. So opening the machine box, remove the top foam. You can then remove the machine by grabbing just onto the throat or the neck of the machine. This is your power cable as well as your rocker arm cover. And then by grabbing the throat of the machine, you can lift the machine out of the box. Once your machine is removed from your box, next step is to place your machine onto your carriage. To do that, you will need to remove your pole from its clamp. Use a little bit of force and you can get it out of the clamp. This next step, I'd recommend at least two people, one to hold the machine and one to hold the pole. We'll then feed the machine through this take-up rail and place the machine on the carriage. I can then place my take-up rail back into my clip and the machine is now placed. What you'll want to do is make sure that your machine is centered on your carriage front to back. I like to have about four, uh, three to four inches on the front, maybe more like four to five inches on the back. Once your machine is installed on the top carriage, you want to make sure that you tighten all four of your screws around the carriage nice and tight to hold your machine snugly against the top carriage. Once you place your machine on the top carriage and tightened your four screws, you can now remove your wood support out of the throat of the machine. To do that, take your scissors and cut the tape. You can then remove the wood block and peel the tape off. This wood block, you want to be sure that you save it, place it into your machine box. You can then remove the fabric out from underneath the needle. Using the hand wheel at the back, you can turn the needle. The needle comes out of the fabric and you can remove the fabric from the needle plate. We're now going to remove the screws from our machine so we can install our handlebar as well as installing our rocker arm cover. As I'm removing the screws, you'll sometimes find that the carriage wants to roll. To prevent that, you can place a rag underneath the wheels to prevent it from rolling, or you can just have somebody else hold the carriage for you. Now notice right here, I'm actually removing the two screws out of the side plate. Those are the two screws that I need to remove in order to mount this rocker arm cover that's gonna be going over this side. So that is proper to remove those two screws, and then I will be reinstalling them. And then for the thread stand, these two screws right here, I don't need to remove them all the way. I just need to loosen them so I can slide the thread stand on. To install our handlebar, at first we'll use one screw. We'll place the one screw through the upper left hole of our L bracket, and then we'll screw onto the face plate of our machine. We don't want to screw this all the way on just yet because we need to pivot this handlebar out of the way while we install our side rocker arm cover then we can reinstall the last three screws of our handlebar. Taking the two pieces we previously removed from our box, remember this is our front display, this is our rocker arm cover. We don't need the whole display just yet, we're going to start with just the display wire and we can install the display wire into the top port of our machine. These connections have a certain pinout in them. 
and so you can't mistakenly plug them into the wrong connector. So I'll install my display wire and then my previously installed handlebar, I'll plug in that wire as well. I'll then remove my rock arm cover. And using the previously removed screws, I can install my rock arm cover. Now it's important, you see, as I install this, there's actually a track that I want to install my wires through. So when it's mounted, this is where my two connectors will go. My wires will run down through the track and they'll poke out this hole that you see here on the front side. So to do that, I place my wires in the track and I feed them out through the front. I can then place my rocker arm onto the side cover and reinstall my screws. Now it's okay to use a little bit of pressure as we're installing this because those wires will be pushing on the case just a little bit and that's okay. Then I can come down and install all four screws that again I previously removed. Make sure all four of your screws are nice and tight. Once your rocker arm cover is installed, you'll take your display wire, wrap it up around the side of your handlebar, and then you'll line your handlebar up with your other three holes, your other three screw holes that still need to be installed. Now remember, as you're screwing this down, you can place something between the wheels to prevent it from rolling, or you can have someone holding the carriage as you're screwing your screws in. Once your handlebars are fully screwed down, you can then install your handlebar display. To do that, you'll want to slide it over your two mounting points. Slide it over those two mounting points, and using the two previously removed screws, attach your display bracket. Notice your display will pivot, so you want to place it about the location you want it to view from, and then tighten your screws. Just because your screws are tight doesn't mean you can't grab onto the display and pivot it up or pivot it down. Once it's set at the proper location, you can then take your display wire, and right here on the side, your display wire will clip into the side of the display. Once you have your display and your wire plugged in on the front, you can then install your thread stand. Remember that we loosen these screws beforehand. I can now take my thread stand and place it on. Using your Phillips head screwdriver, you can tighten those two screws down. Then with your thread stand came your bag of thread stand guide as well as your thread mounts. Each thread mount just presses on to your thread stand like so. You want to press them all the way down. They'll actually clip all the way down to the base. Use a little bit of force and you can press them all the way on. In your bag as well, should be a screw and a washer. And you can mount your thread guide onto the plastic housing. Once 
once screwed in, you can then place your thread guide right on top and this just presses on. And then as you can see, my thread stand will expand and contract. After we've installed our thread stand, we're then gonna install our rear handlebars. To do that, we wanna loosen and actually remove our handlebar brackets. Then the handlebars we previously removed from our box. It's important to note which handlebar goes on which side. The red button goes on the right side, the blue button goes on the left side. Since I'm doing the left bracket right now, I will place my handlebar bracket around the handlebar, the curved side facing up, reinsert the screw, and tighten back onto the machine. We'll then remove our right handlebar bracket. Place the clamp around the handlebar and then replace your screws. You wanna have your cap about a quarter inch off the, the bracket itself. Once your handlebars are installed, I haven't tightened them all the way, so I can still adjust my handlebars a little bit. This is a personal preference, but I like to hug my machine a little bit as I quilt. So I have my handlebars facing down just a little bit around my machine once I have them installed. Once I have them set at a proper location, I'll then tighten my bars down all the way so they won't pivot. I can then take my two wires, and underneath my box right here, I actually have two connection points. The connection points are left to right, so the left handlebar plugs into the left connection point, the right handlebar plugs into the right connection point. After you've plugged in your rear handlebars underneath your box, we can now plug in our encoders. This encoder, since it's on the top of our carriage, is going to plug into, you'll notice here on the side of your box, there's actually marked top encoder and bottom encoder. So what I like to do is I feed my encoder wire down through this clamp right there, and I plug it into the top encoder port. Then my bottom encoder on my bottom carriage plugs into my bottom encoder port. The other ports on here, I have a robotics port. Your system can be directly integrated with a robotics system. There's also a laser port as well as a rear handlebar port, all of which are options um, on your system. After we have those pieces installed, we can then plug in our power wire, which should have come in your box. Install your power wire by pressing it firmly and making sure it seats all the way in. Your connector should have about a quarter inch to an eighth inch gap between the connector and the plug itself. Once connected, plug your wire into your wall outlet and your machine's ready. Mm -hmm.